Hello everyone. Um, I'm going to do something a bit different today to my usual run-of-the-mill haul videos. Um, basically, I just want to talk for a little while. Um, I guess it's what you'd call now a vlog, although until a few weeks ago I didn't even know what a vlog was. I thought it was, uh, I don't know, like a monster from Star Trek or something. But anyway, I've discovered it's like a video log. And basically what I want to do is talk about Spider-Man and what the character to Spider of Spider-Man, uh, what that's meant to me um, over the years and how this ties in with what's happening at the moment with Superior Spider-Man. <clears throat> when I was very young um, and kind of a, of an age when you'd first take an interest in this kind of thing, um, like the superheroes and that sort of thing, there was really nothing that would expose you to anything like that, like there is these days. <clears throat> I mean, at the present time, even if you've never picked up a comic in your life, you're exposed to films, video games, books, TV series, all kinds of things where comic book heroes become a part of life. Um, I think it's very difficult to avoid it now with the success of comic heroes. When I was growing up, the only thing really that was giving you any kind of exposure to that kind of thing was the old Batman series from the 1960s with um, Bert Ward and Adam West. And when I was a young lad, I lived in a very small house in a terrace street of back-to-back -back houses where it was a very close-knit community. Y your grandma lived opposite you, your auntie and uncle lived around the corner and all the kids in the street you had a very close relationship and when I was very young the thing that tied everybody together was the love of this Batman program and um, when Batman was being shown on the TV we were all out playing in the street and me and my brother we were the only kids who had uh, Batman capes that had been made by my mother um, so we were kind of the popular kids because of that and when Batman I can't remember what time it was on, maybe 5.30 in the evening, but you'd all be out playing in the street and then when Batman came on the TV, one of the mothers would open the door and just shout, Batman! And the street would literally just empty. But apart from that, there was there was nothing in terms of comic heroes um, and exposure to comic books. When I was growing up, when you talked about comics, it was the traditional old style comics such as the dandy, the beano, wizard and chips and if you were into war stories it was things such as valiant um, and the eagle so that was really what we meant by comics however for me that all changed when I was about it's hard to say but maybe about 10 or 11 and I went into my local newsagent one day and on the counter where all the magazines and comics were I saw one called The Amazing Spider-Man. Well, just the title alone absolutely blew my mind and I'm guessing that it must have been, yeah it must have been the British Marvel versions of Spider-Man because there would have been no American imports at that time. Um, I'll admit, I can't remember what the the first issue was, it was so long ago now, um, but what I do remember is that it featured a villain called the Green Goblin, um, and this character just fired my imagination so much. That's why this means such a lot to me, um, this issue of... Spider-Man number 179 um, because this is how I remember the Green Goblin from when I was growing up. 
Of course I became completely hooked on my Spider-Man comics and I eventually gathered a huge pile in my bedroom. Um, I think it was published weekly, I think it must have been because I know that over the space of a few years I gathered a huge pile of these things. Unfortunately one day when I was actually looking through um, the pile and looking at the covers and you know picking out some issues that I wanted to reread I came across a, a spider and being a bit of an arachnophobe um, this caused me to throw all my comics away because I was worried that there was a family of spiders living in them. Um, how sad that was um, and how I wish that I still had those comics today. There were no such things as bags and boards in those days to protect them. Anyway, that was how my love of Spider-Man began um, and it turned into a bit of a lifelong thing because obviously I still love my Spider-Man comics today. Um, which kind of brings me on to the present day and really my reason for rambling on like this. It's to talk about Superior Spider-Man. Now, when the death of Dr. Octopus storyline began, high up in the 690s of Amazing Spider-Man, I was really quite excited by this storyline. Um, it did grab me and I remember when I went to the London Super Comic Con earlier this year I had the chance to meet Dan Slott and get some comics signed and I, said, I remember saying to him at the time I really really am enjoying this storyline and he said to me oh you're the one so I mean obviously he had loads of feedback but people weren't very happy about the way things were going and then when they announced that The Amazing Spider-Man was going to be ending with issue 700 and begin with the new Superior Spider-Man, um, I think a lot of people were, well I know a lot of people were very angry about this and weren't at all happy with the direction that things were taking. With me being quite gripped by the storyline towards the end of Amazing Spider-Man, I was quite happy to go along with the ride and see where it took us. Because I knew that eventually, as with all things in comics, the status quo would be uh, resumed once again at some point and um, Peter Parker would come back, um, my Spider-Man would come back um, to his rightful place. But as things went on and basically were no nearer to seeing any resolution with this superior Spider-Man story. I got to about... I got to issue 20 but I'd only read up to issue 16 because as people probably know I tend to like to have a little bit of a run of any storyline before reading um, a few issues at a time. But I kind of got to the point where I didn't want to read it anymore. Um, Dan Slott seemed to be laying all of these multiple plot lines that we all know at some point is going to come together. But by that point I just couldn't see when that was going to come. And I kind of really lost faith in it. And, and I remember having a discussion through YouTube with um, with uh, Scott from Grade A Comics about this, and and he he feels the same way that, that I felt. And at that point, I decided that I was going to discontinue and um, taking Superior Spider-Man off my pull list. And I did, and and since then, I've had this n this niggle at the back of my head. Because Spider-Man's my comic. I mean, I, I read a lot, uh, and I and I love Batman as well. Um, and I mean, Batman goes back, as I was explaining, to to, to my my very small childhood. But Spider-Man's my comic, and it's and it's really rankled me that I've I've dropped it from my pull list. Um, and last night, I 
dug out those issues that I've not read, which was issues uh, 17 to 20, uh, which was the Spider-Man 2099 storyline where he comes back to the present day um, and the whole Tiberius Stone thing, which when I read it and I took it in itself as just as a storyline, I quite enjoyed it in itself. Um, even with the proviso that it's Dr. Octopus as Spider-Man. But what really got me angry was when I read Superior Spider-Man number 20 and particularly the the couple of pages where Spider-Man beats the crap out of a black cat. And, and I got to thinking, this is just not Spider-Man. It's not the Spider-Man I know. And... I really don't like it, but I've changed my mind about picking up the book and I've actually ordered off the internet issues 21 to 23 um, because I want to keep getting them because I still believe that there's going to come a point where Peter Parker's going to come back and it's going to go back to being the amazing Spider-Man. and. I, I guess that's the point of making this video because I'm just wanting to speak about this dilemma that's been going on in the back of my head ever since I dropped it and my dislike of where things are and, and where they seem to be going at the moment but my not wanting to drop the Spider-Man title because after all this Superior Spider-Man comic is the premier Spider-Man title and, and and this is where all my dilemmas come in. So I guess really, I just wanted to have an outlet to have this discussion um, because I, there's nobody I can talk to it about, talk to about it, except you guys. Um, and, I, and I hope you don't think that I'm rambling on, which I probably am. But I just needed to get this kind of off my chest, and I'd really love. If anybody's got any thoughts about this, um, I'd really love to get into kind of a dialogue about it. I'd love to get any comments. Um, like I said, I've, I've, I've had brief discussions with Scott about this. Um, but I'm kind of... I'm hating myself for the kind of... the completest in me wanting to see this superior Spider-Man run through and see how it ends. And the part of me that is going back to my childhood and the Spider-Man that I know, Peter Parker, and his values and how he would react in different situations. And, and I guess that's the whole point of what Dan Slott's trying to do. But it just, it just niggles with me. And anyway... I'll, I'll stop here because I've kind of said what I wanted to say um, and thanks for listening if you've managed to you know watch this to the end um, and like I say if you've got any comments um, I'd absolutely love to hear them because this has all just been going on in my head um, so yeah so that's it so thanks very much for watching um, I'm aware that I don't really get many viewers and and I didn't start doing this this for to get like loads of viewers or loads of subscribers but I kind of would like to think that if I am doing this people are going to be watching so I, I don't know how you get exposure at this kind of thing so if any of you you know like what I'm doing if you could maybe put a link to the channel um, or or tweet it or something like that whatever you do I'd really appreciate I'd really appreciate it because I would like to think that you know my inane dribblings are actually you know getting watched by anybody I know I've got like a hardcore of my subscribers who, who watch my videos and I'm really grateful for that but anyway I'll stop there I hope you've enjoyed it and if you haven't enjoyed it I hope I haven't bored you stupid um, 
I do have a whole video from last week to do. I've got quite a bit of stuff to show, so I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that that's late, but I'll try and get that up as quick as I can. In the meantime, thanks again, and I'll catch you guys later.